Hi, and welcome to another Qubit how-to video. Today, we'll be talking about different methods of measuring a waffle pod slab. Let's get started. In today's video, we're going to find the total volume of concrete needed for this waffle pod slab, and also show a couple of different ways of how we can measure our steel reinforcement within that slab. We'll start with the concrete. As you can see, according to the waffle pod schedule, our slab will have an overall depth of 400 mils. Our voids, or, or our pods, will be 300 mils each, leaving us a slab thickness on top of those voids of 100 mils. We also can measure our internal ribs at 110 me uh, millimeters wide, and our external or edge beams at 300 millimeters wide. We also can see, according to the schedule here, that our pods should be 1090 by 1090 pods, and we already know that they will need to be 300 mils deep. Coming back to our plan, we can see that we have a number of pods with the X's marked that are our 1090 by 1090 pods, but we also have a number of pods around the external perimeter that aren't marked with an X indicating that they must be a different size. But we can still measure these based off the measurements provided in this plan. The first thing I'll do is scroll in on one of our X's here and use our ruler tool to double check that these pods are in fact 1090. And as you can see here, we have 1090 on our width and 1090 in our height. So we can assume that the measurements of this plan and the scale of this plan are correct. Therefore, we can also assume that the size of these smaller pods we can also estimate. I've preset my estimate to show the volume of concrete fully at 400 mils deep and this is where we'll start today. As you can see according to our calculations if the slab was a full 400 mils thick across the entire external perimeter we would end up with 76.53 cubic meters of concrete. We can now count our pods and start doing a bit of a deduction. We'll move into our deductive count here. As you see, we're in our waffle pods trade heading. And we're going to count the full pods at 1090 by 1090 by 300 using our count tool. going through and do that now. As you can see we have 101 full pods on this plan. Because we know the dimensions of these pods we can use referencing to calculate the total volume that these pods will assume and then use that to deduct from our concrete. Back in my slabs, beams and ribs trade heading I can reference our cell in the waffle pods by selecting its cell, copying its address, and pasting it up above. And from here, we can multiply that by 1.09, by 1.09 again, and by 0.3 the dimensions of our pods and as you see we end up with 36 cubes. Using referencing again to find the volume of concrete less our pods we can say take the volume of the slab at full, take the volume of our pods 
and deduct that quantity out. And as you can see, our reference is now taking the 36 away from our 76, producing us a total co um, concrete quantity of 40.53 cubes. Lastly, we need to measure the individual incomplete pods around the edge of our slab. Once again, because we know the dimensions, we can literally use our rectangle tool indicate our volume depth and simply take them off one at a time as you can see I've completed all of those external pods including the ones that I missed originally on the balcony and we can deduct this quantity from our measure again from our volume of concrete less our pods using referencing. So we can quickly see using our external perimeter shape a count on the number of pods that are complete and a measure of the individual pods on this plan we can calculate the total amount of concrete needed for this slab. We can then use the external perimeter to calculate our troweling, our edge beam, and our waterproof membrane. As you can see, our waterproof membrane is measured in a per roll, and we've received the total square meters rounded up. We can find out how many rolls we need by dividing every square meter, one divided by the size of our sheeting. So let's assume that we have a sheet that's 50 meters long and four meters wide. Therefore, we'll only need the one roll to cover this entire footing. Please note that all calculations presented in this video do not take into consideration wastage or other professional considerations in these calculations. They are merely presented as a guide for you in your work within Qubit. Let's look at the reinforcement. In order to more clearly show you, I have hidden all of the other shapes, excluding our external perimeter, from our viewport. Coming back to the waffle pod schedule, we can see that for our reinforcement, we need some SL92 sheets and some M16 bar. I've pre these this information into our estimate. And we'll start with our top sheet reinforcement, the SL92 sheets. Once again, we can utilize the shapes that we've already created by dragging and dropping. Obviously, we don't want to purchase 191 sheets for this small job. We will need to divide our square meters down so that this is an accurate measurement. Once again, we can do that by utilizing our factor column, dividing by the size of our sheet, 2.4, by 6 to work out that we require 13.29 sheets exactly. Obviously we'd like to round that up to a complete sheet number. We can do that in our details panel, change our calculate sheet, calculation, changing our calculation sheet rounding to up for a full 14 sheets. Once again, I haven't taken into consideration our lap lengths, and you can do this independently per job depending on the engineer's drawings. Let's also look at how we can calculate 
our ribs, both internal and external. What I'm going to do here is measure it in two different ways. Firstly, with a measurement type we've got in cubit called length by center. And secondly, we'll measure the independent lengths. The length by center tool is a very versatile tool and truly comes into its own when we start talking about measurements such as our steel reinforcement. We already know that firstly our plan uh, is accurate to its scale. We know that our pods are uh, 1090 millimeters wide and that our ribs are 110 millimeters wide. So therefore the distance between our centers in the ribs should be 1200 mils. So with our length by center tool, I can set my spacing to 1200. I'm going to make my lines as straight as I possibly can. So I'm going to utilize the snapping tool. And whilst I've missed a couple over here, I will come back to them in just a moment. And I'll show you how we can fix, fix that up. I'm going to go all the way to the edges and around here. We will snap back to that other corner in just a moment. I'll push around the entire edge of this shape. As you see, as I finish the shape, every single internal rib has been measured at 1200 mil spacings. And we can see in our calculation sheet, firstly we have just in our horizontal measures here a total of 139 lineal meters and that's being presented in various widths. We've got one 10 meter length here at the top. We've got three 16 meter lengths. Well, let's just extend this to the line here and we'll snap to there. And the reason I left that out in the first place is because there was no snapping point in this corner. So just for simplicity's sake, I snapped to a different corner and changed it later on. But there you have it. Those are the independent lengths along this shape. And I'll just see if I can fix up my corners here. I think I've made a mistake somewhere. Let's see, just make sure that's properly snapped to there. And is that the same? Yes, there we go. Okay, cool. So now we need to calculate the vertical lengths as well. Now we could utilize the grid patterns within uh, the length by center shape, but there's a much easier way to make sure it's accurately presented on a plan like this. What I'm going to do is copy and paste the shape, grab my secondary shape and tell the origin line to instead of being this first line, I want it to be my last line. And with a click of a button, we can now see all of the internal ribs based off that first origin line at 133 lineal meters, totaling up to 274 lineal meters. And there we have, when we click the line itself, the entire grid pattern displayed correctly. Simple and easy to do with the length by center tool. Now what I'm going to do is hide these shapes and take off each individual rib manually using the line tool and with just the length result type. As you see, we're within half a meter's difference. So therefore, either tool will produce to you an accurate result for your internal ribs. We can use our external line as well on our length measure to also calibrate our external rib. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you'd like more content like this, subscribe to our page. You can also find more information on our website. And don't forget to call our support team for any more questions you may have about using Qubit. Happy estimating.